everybody, welcome back again to another Getaway with the Crawfords. This time is our final video of reviewing the three premium cruise lines. Once again, we already did the Holland America Rotterdam. We've already done the Princess, Discovery Princess. And this time we're reviewing the Celebrity Solstice that we took on the Mexican Riviera. Uh, just came back from L.A. about two weeks ago. Had a wonderful time. Stephanie, my beautiful wife, is going to explain how we're scoring everything and what we're doing here. Go ahead. So we scored them on five categories, areas of the ship, food, service, entertainment, and ports. Um, it's out of 25? 25, 25 total. yeah. Total. And so in the past, uh, Holland America scored 19. Correct. And Discovery Princess got a 22.5. So right now, Discovery Princess is the ship to beat. Uh, will Celebrity beat Discovery? Will it fall in in the middle? Will it be the bottom? We don't know. Uh, well, we know. But you're going to find out here shortly <laughs> how this is all going to shake out. And uh, what we enjoyed and what we didn't like about the uh, Celebrity Solstice. So uh, let's get this video going. All right, hey, so we just got on board the Celebrity Solstice. Our Mexican Riviera cruise is about ready to take off. Sadly already, though, I was told that Celebrity does either a cold towel when you get on board or a nice welcome glass of champagne. Nothing. Um, it's just been, do your hands, come in the door, and that's it. So that's, uh, that's a shame. You know, we're looking for something a little bit nicer, but uh, we'll see. You know, maybe things get better as it goes on. So first impression, eh. Okay, so one nice thing that we have learned about Celebrity uh, is that you can come to your room, drop your bags off, grab your key card, and then go out. There's signs on it saying we're still preparing your cabin, please come back at 1. But at least they let you get in your cabin to drop your carry-ons off and then go explore the ship, go have some fun, all that good stuff. So, good job! Alright, so first uh, we're talking about service. And as you can see by the first two videos, uh, one kind of negative thing there uh, with no real welcome aboard on board the ship. I mean, we you walk on the ship and that's it. No one there to greet you. No, hey, welcome, nothing. No, I was told there'd be champagne. I was told there'd be the cold towel. Something more nice of a welcome aboard. Nothing like that happened. Uh, and then, But it was nice that we were able to go to our cabin, drop our bags off, and then head out to explore the ship and get some lunch as well. Um, I did enjoy that a lot because other cruise ships, you know, they make you carry your carry-ons till the rooms are ready and that's kind of annoying. So that was a nice plus. Uh, but before I even got on board the ship, <laughs> talking about service, so before I even got on board the ship, at check-in, uh, the lady who checked us in was actually pretty rude. Pretty rude to me because I fly, when I fly and I use my passport, and when Steph and I travel all the time, I've never had an issue. I use my first name, I use my last name. My passport has my whole God-given name, right? She made a huge deal about those two things not matching up. And I said, well, that's odd. She goes, no, actually, it's not odd. This is your passport with your whole name, and it needs to match what you booked. And I'm like... He's still mad. <laughs> I am still mad. Um, I was like, no, it's odd because my wife and I travel all the time, and I've never had this issue, and frankly, this is the third cruise we've been on in six months, and this is the first time that this has been a problem. And she's like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and override the system and let you on, but next time it needs to be proper. And I'm like, since when? Now, my father, I'm a junior. My father's a senior. I asked him, I was like, so when you guys checked in, I was like, does, does your passport and your name, do they match, or did you just fly under your first name, last name? He goes, oh, this first name, last name. He goes, I never list my whole name when I cruise and i was like wow did they complain about that he goes no they said no problem at all. Just check this in and we walk around it was the easiest check-in i've ever dealt with like uh-huh so we just got a rude uh check-in agent with celebrity i don't know what her problem was but she was horrible and she put me in a bad mood for i even got on the ship i did not appreciate it at all because i mean we i work in the travel industry and i kind of know the ins and outs and stuff and like she was just like just being a pain for no reason for I have no idea why. I don't know. Maybe I smiled too much and she didn't like it. Who knows? Maybe the L.A. smog got to her that day. I don't know. But she was a pain to deal with. Didn't She's usually pretty charming. Yeah. Like, the Charlie charm works on a lot of people. And this lady wasn't having it. And it put me in a bad mood before we even stepped foot on the ship. So, uh, the score that we're giving the service is a... I gave it a 3 for different reasons. Steph gave it a... 3.5. 3.5. That averages out to 3.25. <laughs> um, there were some really good parts about the service, and then there were some pretty bad 
parts about the service. I do have to add a side note. There were cold towels later on, like after we got done eating lunch. We went down to like where people were um, embarking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they had cold towels. I don't know where they were for us. Yeah. But, but there weren't even that many of them. I, I don't yeah. feel like, yeah. Like, so maybe they, they like ran out or they didn't have them ready for us. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But there was no, no fanfare. No. We just like walked on and there was, there was no, nobody there was, greeted us. There no, was there was nothing. one lady on the gangway like that, you know, made to do the hand sanitizer, of course. Well, yeah. That was it. <laughs> Other than that, it was, you walk on and it's like, where do you go? Like yeah. it, it was, yeah, kind of a strange, probably the strangest boarding process yeah. we've ever had, to be honest. No it's kind real of the same thing welcome. I, I think maybe, was it Holland or Princess, where we just walked on to some random po- part of the ship? Was that Holland? Yeah, Holland. Like, was, just down some hallway. It was yeah. kind of similar, almost a little similar yeah. to that. It's just like, okay, we're here. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... For me, like the service, like the bartenders were good. Uh, there was plenty of wait staff who were on top of it. Nice. Um, it was odd though, because I, you know, I, I do tip good service, and I went to. There's a couple pool bartenders who would serve you drinks. And I went to tip them, and they almost were kind of offended by it, or didn't want the tip, and didn't know how to like accept it or take it. Um, I don't think they said thanks. So I didn't really tip after that. I was just kind of okay. Maybe you don't tip on this cruise line or. I don't know, maybe $5 is yeah. an insult? I don't yeah. know, it's kind of weird. We do weird. have prepaid gratuity, so it's yeah. not like we didn't tip at all. But yeah. Yeah, just I'm, like the extras we normally would do, they just seem yeah. uncomfortable. They see, yeah, it was kind of a strange <laughs> situation. Um, so I don't know about that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, service at the front desk, because uh, the one day I misplaced my key card. It was actually, Steph had it somehow, and didn't tell me she had it, but... <laughs> Not the story. <laughs> but anyways, oh, it was in your towel or clothes just, or something. Just continue. Yeah, whatever. I had to go down <laughs> to guest relations and get a new key card, which made me miss the medallion because that was wonderful. Um, no problem down there. Super nice and friendly. Had a good joke with the lady working down there, and it was awesome. Um, the uh, the the coffee shop people, everybody was nice. I you know, um, not everybody. No, no, not no. Not everybody. Not well, no, not <laughs> the the. People working the food service, I guess, as I would say. Was yeah, nice. we had um, terrific waiters. I think Mark was our head waiter. Yes, Mark. And he's fantastic. Um, we also had Collie. Ka- Collie. Collie flower. <laughs> um, Collie, and he was great, and he would say hi to us, like, All even, the time. Yeah, when we were at, um, even when we weren't dining. Yeah. So he was really, he was really great. Introduced me to some new foods. Mm-hmm. Props to him. Yeah, yeah. They made our experience really, yeah. really good. So, we like them. Somebody that I was not fond of um, was our room attendant. I've We've been probably on like seven cruises together, maybe. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. He's been on more than me. I've never dealt with anything like this in my life. I don't know if he's new. I don't know. His yeah. name was Miko. Sorry, Miko. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been a misunderstanding. I don't know. Um, all I wanted was an extra towel. Um, so, I... Looked for, he gave you like a card when you first show up. They give you a card with their extension and their name. I needed a towel, I couldn't find the card. Um, what happened to the card? I don't know. Probably with the, the key card that, yeah. <laughs> that I had. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Things just disappear when I have them. He has to be understanding of that. Um, I can't keep track of anything. <laughs> so the card's gone. I need to call someone. Um, there is a button on the phone, and we're going to show you that phone. Yeah, yeah, we'll show you the phone button that clearly yeah. states, room attendant, state room attendant, yeah. hit this button right here. Yeah. so I hit the button because I can't find the number, and um, some person answers, not sure who, not sure where they were, but I hit the button, they asked me for my state room number, what I needed, um, I told them I needed a towel, that was the end of it, hung up, I went and took a shower. Yeah. I'll let you pick it up from there. Okay. So first, because they give you two <laughs> towels in your stateroom. That was it. Two bath towels. And, you know, most females need more than two. So, you know, it is what it is. So he calls back. I pick up the phone. He goes, yeah, what did you need? And I was like, oh, I was like, Steph just needs another <laughs> towel for her hair. She, she'd like to have an extra towel. He goes, why did you dial that number? And I was like, uh, I was like, because we couldn't, know. we didn't have your number. I was like, I'm sorry. He goes, I left my card underneath the TV. And I go, well, it's not there anymore. And he goes, it's there. It's under your TV. And I go, no, no, it's not. I assure you, the card is not on 
It's not under the TV. It's not anywhere in this room. The card is gone. I gave you my card. Yes. And I was like, okay, yeah, I got it. <laughs> I was like, gone. it's it's gone. We don't have it. And he goes, okay. And he goes, I will be there shortly. And he hangs up on me. And I'm like, what in the world? I was like, okay, we've obviously ticked this guy off for some reason. I felt super bad. Yeah. Honestly. She, Seth felt really bad. Like, she left him even an I'm sorry yeah. note. Why would you leave have a stateroom attendant number on a phone if you were not supposed to call it? So then it gets better. <laughs> he shows up at the door and stresses again to never hit that button on the phone. He understands that it says stateroom attendant, but he says, never hit that button. And he gives me his card again. And I go, okay. I go, what about the towel? And he goes, you'll get that later. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, sorry, Miko. Yeah. And he left and that was it. And I was like, wow. And from that point on, like, it was just very awkward with him. Mm -hmm. Like, and he was not friendly to us at all. Um, we had issues with our uh, veranda furniture that broke because it was in really bad shape. And you'll see that later in this video. He was not helpful with that, really. Um, my parents, who were right next door to us on this cruise, got phenomenal service from him. And, but us, we got, like, horrible service. Like, we were supposed to get chocolates every now and the pillow. And finally, we had to say, like, my parents just said, well, why are they not getting chocolates? And he said, they are getting chocolates. And we we're like, no, no, we didn't. <laughs> Never got chocolates. Um, there was supposed to be a, a laundry bag in your room if you want to do laundry. He claims it was in the closet. There was no laundry bag in the closet. And it was just really interesting. And it left a bad taste in our mouth. And, I mean, I don't know. Like, I know that they really want you to leave a good review so they can get days off and, and what have you. But this is one of the first times where we did not leave a good review about Miko. It was a horrible stateroom attendant. Horrible experience. I've never dealt with that. I mean... Don't put the button on the phone if you don't want someone to call that number. I don't understand why it's there. Seems super odd to me. But, yeah. So, that was that whole uh, yeah. fiasco. Yeah. So, that wasn't that wasn't the best. And that put, I, I don't know. I felt really bad about it, but also upset at the same time. Yeah. But I also felt guilty because I was like, I didn't want to get him in trouble. But I don't know who I called. <laughs> I just wanted to tell him. Yeah. I did, however, get, well, we did have lots of towels until the end of the trip. Yeah, It yeah. was never a problem again. Yeah, but, I mean, I think, um, what, you brought like five or something? Yeah, and then we had too many towels. Yeah, we had too many towels. <laughs> so, I was like, but, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. But, yeah, so we gave it a 3.25. The the dining room staff was phenomenal. Uh, a lot of staff, but we just, the check-in agent who we dealt with was not mm -hmm. friendly at all, uh, as well as the... Miko, our stateroom attendant, was not a positive experience at all. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, unfortunately those numbers, when you deal with those, it's going to bring the numbers down. I mean, we, we went back and forth for two weeks now. We've been going back and forth and talking about it, and yeah. you just can't rate it higher than that just because of that alone. Yeah. All right, and our next category is areas of the ship. Um, we were on the Celebrity Solstice. We were supposed to be on the Millennium when we booked this trip. Um, the Millennium ship has been revolutionized when? Uh, right before COVID. So it was the last ship, I believe, to be revolutionized before COVID. This one has not. It is scheduled for a dry dock soon? Springtime of 2023, Springtime. I believe. Yeah. So maybe if you decide to book a trip on the solstice after watching this video, maybe yours will be after a dry dock. Um, but because of this and because... Um, when we went on Holland America and when we went on um, Princess, we were both on brand new ships. So it is a little, maybe slightly unfair to compare the two. And because of that, I'm going to give Areas of the Ship a 3.5. I, on the other hand, <laughs> feel, have been told that Celebrity was the best of the best. Uh, the, you know... People and the fan groups and the cruise lines that you follow. High expectations. High expectations of celebrities. So I went in with high expectations. And knowing that <laughs> the solstice hasn't been to dry dock since 2016, I was really um, still hoping for the best, thinking, okay, they'll keep the ship up to a really, really nice high standards because that's what I was told to expect from celebrity. So I gave it a three. I didn't cut as much slack. I thought some things were definitely lacking that should have been. Handle, especially before we got on and passengers before us got on. Like, just some glaring issues, in my opinion, that should have been um, taken care of, in my opinion. So that equates to a 3.25 on the 
ship, ship areas, however you want to say it. The room was bigger, though. Oh, the room was bigger, yeah. The room was definitely bigger than the Discovery Princess. Yeah, yeah, for Mm -hmm. sure. So we're going to give you a little room tour and show you some of the good and the bad. That's right. Let's hit it. So here we are, the Celebrity Solstice, cabin number 8351. This is a Sunset Veranda stateroom. We'll go ahead and do the cabin tour real quick for you. Start off here, right to the left is the bathroom. This is a really nice bathroom actually. Larger than most ships, plenty of room, which is great. Got your hair dryer over there, glasses, plenty of toiletry storage. More down there, nice sink. That's got your bath products. We didn't upgrade to any of the other spa, blue, whatever stuff they do here. We're just Standard cruisers, really nice size bathroom. Love the glass closing doors, it's real nice. You got hooks here for where we hung our backpacks. Full length mirror over here. TV, desk, water, your mini bar is down there, fridge. It isn't upcharged, so if you take anything out of there, they're gonna charge you no matter if you're on the beverage package or not. We had our beds combined to make a queen king somewhere in between there. Nice couch with a table. And then over here is a closet. The closet seems a little small to me compared to other cruise ships, but still there was definitely plenty of hangers. There's more down there with two robes as well as a safe, which is nice. So we'll make it work. It is a nice room. This is definitely a bigger stateroom than what we had on the Discovery Princess. You can definitely tell it's bigger. Longer, a little wider, not as cramped, which is nice. The veranda out here, though, the furniture, my only complaint is it's really old. It's really showing its age. Well, it's weathered. Could definitely some TLC or just replace in general. Um, but we do got footstools and a table. And it is a bigger balcony. Now, we were supposed to be on the Celebrity Millennium, which had a huge sunset veranda balcony. So we were a little disappointed when they switched us to the Solstice that has not been upgraded yet or revolutionized because of COVID. Um, so hopefully soon the ship will be revolutionized. But for, you know, being a pretty old ship, it's looking really good. They're definitely taking good care of it from what we see so far. So that's our cabin. Sunset Veranda, 8351 Mexican Riviera, October 2022. Celebrity Solstice, there you go. So my issues are really easy, common fixes in my opinion, especially for a premium cruise line. Like our window curtain that closed off our room to the veranda had a bunch of holes in it. This is easily fixed by maintenance. The table had a ton of soot on it that no one ever seemed to clean. So before we could ever use it every day, we had to go out and clean it with uh, just a towel that we have from the bathroom. You can see how it looked. It was absolutely disgusting. But this was a daily thing where we cleaned our table because no one else would. And also our balcony uh, veranda deck furniture was falling apart, literally falling apart on us and should not be on anybody's veranda, especially for a premium cruise line like Celebrity. Uh, I got some better pictures here. See, the chair is actually falling apart on us, like shredding. Uh, The wood teak was just destroyed as well. It just looked really, really poor. So eventually, as you can see, the chair gave out on us. Uh, when we were using it on this cruise, I kind of made me feel horrible about myself, especially when I called it in the Miko to tell him. And he knew what I was talking about, it was just like off to file a report against it. I'm like, okay, whatever. So chair gave out, was disappointing, and then they ended up just throwing it in the hallway for us to see for a while, which is a shame as well. So uh, that's why, I'm, you know, just small details like that should never happen on a premium cruise line. Now for a little bit of the good. Um, Just like some of the other ones, uh, Holland America, I think, this one also had little towels when you went to the bathroom. And I did enjoy the quotes above the urinals in the men's room. They were nice to read and make you chuckle, so it was fun to see those. Something unique to Celebrity um, was the lawn. Um, It had a putting green out there. There There's also a place um, that you could play bocce ball. They had movies. We didn't spend a ton of time out there. Yeah, I thought we'd have more time up there, actually. It was kind of weird. Like, they had movies up there, but not really seating. It was, it was a little odd. And the seats um, were covered in soot, too. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, they had lots of pools. Um, the outdoor pool, I thought it could be bigger. I would like another outdoor pool or two. Um, the Discovery Princess had four pools, but we didn't need them in Alaska. This one had two. Um, but it did have an indoor pool, um, which would be nice if you are going to Alaska. So 
if you're looking for one of those type of cruises, this might be a really good ship for that. Wasn't the best if there would have been a lot of people. Luckily, Correct. we were not at capacity. Yeah. Um, the library, they had a library. You could, um, like, borrow these books and return them. It wasn't as nice as Holland America's, but it definitely got used. Used. Um, this is, like, the atrium lobby. Um, it's a little bit more impressive than the ones we've been on in the past. Um, I still would have liked a little bit more, but it's nice. You could see everything. There was glass elevators, a live tree in the middle. That was really neat. I like that little touch. Um, the dining hall was, like, really classy. I did have a few issues with the spa. Um, I really thought spas are pretty standard everywhere you go, and this is the only time I've had a bad experience at a spa. Um... As you'll see later, this has a gym, like most cruise ships do. Um, the gym was located right above the spa. So as I'm getting my massage, it just sounds like thunder up there. It sounds like someone's dropping huge boulders. And I was like, what's going on? And finally, like, I kind of asked the masseuse, and um, she said, or massage therapist, I don't know the correct term. <laughs> um, she said, you know, oh, the gym's up there. And so she made a few calls. Um, because it was even getting a little loud for her, like a little out of control. Um, but nothing really came from those calls, and it just kept happening. So it was, like, probably one of the most unrelaxing massages I've ever had. Um, it turns out it was some of the ship crew, um, what were they called? Acrobat? Yeah, acrobats from the yeah. shows. Yeah. Um, some of the entertainment guys who have strong muscles that are well needed for their show. But it was very disruptive. <laughs> To the spa experience that's supposed to be relaxing also it just the room was kind of dingy it kind of felt like I was like in some weird basement I didn't really get that feeling on the other ships um the shower on like the discovery princess was like open and big and this one was just like a little tiny shower so just wasn't as impressive for a spa did they try um, to upsell you um they did but I made it pretty clear that I wasn't like at the beginning when you're filling out the form, don't put that you have any problems. Don't put any information because they will try to say everything is perfect and fine. And then they won't have anything to sell you. Yeah, very good. Um, Helpful, and, tip. Yeah. Helpful tip from Stephanie. Yeah. And the gym, some pictures of the gym, was very nice. It did not, I did not use the gym on this trip. Um, but um, it was really nice. It had a lot to offer. And I think it was also open 24-7. Correct. All right, so now we're on to a very important category, and that's food. I mean, let's be honest. Who doesn't go on a cruise ship and, you know, doesn't go for the food? I mean, that's one of the key things is good food. Uh, the Celebrity Solstice had amazing food. I got to be honest. The food to me was awesome. The dining room food, mainly dining room food, fantastic. They had the staples. They had your, your surf and turf. They had the baked Alaska creme brulee every night. They had the escargot every night. Uh, it was amazing. The food was amazing. I gave this a score of 4.5 out of 5. The reason I did not go with a 5 out of 5 was because the late night options were pretty poor. Um, they had late night offerings up in the buffet that were really poor. Like the salad bar was super picked over. You could wait in a line for one guy making pizza. And that took way too long. They had one guy at the pasta stand, once again, took way too long. It was long. cold, and you had to wait for them yeah. to heat it up. Yeah, it's cold, and you had to wait for them to heat it up. That was it. Um, they had room service. From 11 to 4 a.m., there's a charge for room service. So it's not free room service 24-7. It's free all the other time, but from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m., you do have to pay. So the late night options are not there. Uh, the one day, it was, the late, it was early afternoon, like around 5-ish. We, her and I were still kind of hungry. Before dinner, because we knew we were eating dinner a little later that night, um, I said we went to the, like their mass grill or whatever up where they give burgers and hot dogs, and that was already closed. And we got like the last hot dog, and I was like, it was just odd. So, uh, food was phenomenal. the The wait staff, like we already said, was phenomenal. One um, of the really cool things was on this cruise ship when we get wine, they just kept filling it up. Yeah. Maybe it's because we have the drink package, but yeah, that, across it, cruise ships, they would just like have to ask you and you have to wait. Like, he just brought it around and filled it yeah, up. Like, they, you didn't have to ask. No, the sommelier was awesome. He came around, and, like, you had to basically tell him, oh, um, that's enough for me tonight. <laughs> uh, even they brought us caramel macchiato every evening. Um, and something that's never happened to me before in a cruise ship is the chef, the head chef from the kitchen, came out and personally thanked every table for dining and cruising with them. And that was pretty awesome. He didn't have to do that. They don't, you know, they can do their one 
tour parade that every cruise ship does. But he came out to every table and personally thanked everybody for coming, cruising, dining, and everything. And I thought that was pretty nice. That was nice. Um, but yeah, the, the wine, the, the sommelier on board was fantastic. The food tasted really, really good, especially in the main dining room. Um, I'll let Steph take it from here, and she can tell you what she liked and disliked. Have at it! I went ahead. I just gave it just a four. So our total is 4.25, um, mm-hmm. which I'm a picky eater, so we've talked about this before in previous videos. Um, there was not a lot of options for people like me. I mean, I <laughs> um, I did try some new foods. I tried some Indian food. What was that called again? Uh, it was butter chicken. Butter chicken. Butter mm-hmm. chicken, fantastic. Yeah, I'm a big fan. The chips and dips um, thing he had. Yeah. So I, I did try some stuff out of my comfort zone, um, and it was all good. The food was delicious, probably some of the best food that we've had, um, but for me it was just lack of options. They had like that mask girl that had the hamburgers and the hot dogs, and besides the buffet and the dining room, that was it. There was tons of specialty restaurants, um, but as far as just like food, just to like go eat, especially if you didn't want like table service, there just wasn't as much. Um, the buffet was fine. Um, it wasn't as good as Hall in America's, so yeah. that's why I kind of gave it a four. Yeah. Um, but the, like the room service was good. The stuff that was included was good. Um, but another reason why I gave it a four was because it was <laughs> a four for me is good. <laughs> Let's put it up. <laughs> um, what rose like the score up a little bit was. The specialty dining there is one of the best I've ever had. So yeah. we went to, we chose Le Petit Chef. So we're going to show you some pictures. Um, and I think just pictures. Sorry, I mean, there's a video. There's Maybe a, a video. There's a video clip as well. Okay. Uh, I would tie this more into like probably something you'd see on a Disney cruise line. Mm-hmm. More, you know, because it's a show on your table. Animated show of them preparing the food. And then mm-hmm. they set the food in front of you. And it, it's fun. Yeah. The food was great. Yeah. They're preparing <laughs> the food. And then, like, in front of your eyes, and then yeah. you see it. Um, and one of the bad things is that there's only one menu for it, so you kind of have to eat what they give you. Yeah. But they do have one other. They do have a couple options. There's, like, the main menu, and then there's the alternative menu. Yeah. If you choose something off the alternative menu, it does not go along with the show. Yeah. Um, so I chose just to do the regular one just for the experience. And I mean, I was eight, and I was still full. Yeah. So even for picky eaters, I mean, I had to pick around some yeah. stuff. But... Um, that did not spoil the experience yeah. at all. It was really good. And then on the, our first night was when we did Le Petit Chef. Uh, wonderful experience there. There was only one other table in there with us. So uh, it's a smaller dining room, but mm-hmm. it was really empty. So it was really nice and intimate. It was Steph and I's anniversary that night. Mm-hmm. Happy anniversary. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we did get a nice little anniversary cake as well to mm-hmm. celebrate our night. So that was really sweet and nice. Uh, we did appreciate that as well. So I'm sure that specialty restaurants are fantastic if yeah. we would have tried all of them. But I'm always there for the food that's included. Yeah. and So that's kind of why the options were a little low. There was no like 24-hour pizza or even ice cream. You couldn't just yeah. go get that anytime you wanted. Yeah. There was very limited options for late night eating or off of the normal like lunch, dinner, breakfast times. Yeah. So... Enjoy the videos, and we're going to show you some of the food and um, videos from Little Petit Chef. Correct. All right, roll it. Oh, 
One thing I also did appreciate is that they had a very delicious hot breakfast delivered to your room every day if you wanted it. It was great. Here's a sample of a typical dinner menu for one of the nights if you're in the main dining room. Okay, so one quick thing here that kind of irritates me. Uh, Steph and I, we did upgrade to the premium beverage package before we got on board the ship a couple days prior, like a week prior, because the cost really was pretty good. So we're like, well, why not? Let's upgrade to the premium beverage package, which means we're pretty much afforded anything on the ship drink-wise. We're not really paying for anything out of pocket. Well, nothing out of pocket. It's great. It's a nice plan. The only problem I have, though, is that when you order a drink, you have to specify premium. You want the premium wines, the premium bourbons, the premium water, because if you don't, they'll give you the celebrity water, which is the classic beverage package. So if you if you say premium, you get the little aquapanas and all the good stuff. But if you don't say premium, they're going to give you the cheap stuff, the well liquor, everything else. And that's kind of irritating because they can see it on your card. They know you're premium, but yet they still give you the cheaper stuff. And I don't agree with that. If you can see it's premium, you can see our profile, we have premium. Just give us premium. I shouldn't have to ask for it. Okay, that's all. Back to the fun. All right, so now our next uh, category is entertainment. Uh, this one, I gave it a 4.5. Steph gave it a 5. Uh, Her first 5 of the whole rating here for this cruise ship. Uh, the reason that I gave it a 4.5 is the entertainment was phenomenal. It was really good. Like, probably some of the best entertainment that we saw. Um, my reason for the half-off score, I guess you'd say, is because, one, the comedian was not good. She wasn't funny. I didn't get a, I didn't laugh at all, really. Um, didn't really care for her. I mean, she was clean, but just not a funny comedian, unfortunately. Uh, and then, also, they had a magician on board one night, and he was not good. Um, I might hire him for, like, a kid's party, but not to entertain adults. He spent, I don't know, 15 minutes, you know, the silver rings that they have, where they take two silver rings and they combine them together. Oh, wow. He spent 10 minutes or so <laughs> on that trick alone. I was like, what is happening? So, I mean, not a good magician in my opinion. I don't know. Uh, but the rest of the shows were phenomenal, fantastic. Loved it all. Even the live music they had on board was awesome, fun, phenomenal. Um, I'm trying to think of the glass blowing. Um, we had also heard is that. this go to on this one? Yes. yes. Okay, keep going. We had, <laughs> I heard this is like an older crowd on this ship, so I was actually kind of like low-key a little nervous that I was yeah. going to be bored. Uh, I was never bored, and I think that's one of the reasons why I gave it a five. Um, I know uh, his family, we brought some cards. Yeah. Never played. Never played cards. Never, didn't yeah. have to play cards. I was really worried, like, maybe I'm going to get bored on this ship, and I did not. Um, the stage shows were some of the best, like, production shows I've ever seen. That might be due to the aerialists slash acrobats, whatever I called yeah, them before. Yeah. Um, I've never seen that on a cruise ship before. It was phenomenal. Um, I thought that um, the um, they brought in a group called, do you remember what they called? It was Motown, Uptown, Uptown something. Uptown. Yeah, I think it was Uptown, right? They it were tripping to Motown. Uptown, Uptown, Uptown yeah. something. They were great. And I just think that. All of those things were so good that it kind of just overshadowed all the bad parts for me. <laughs> um, because it was the best I've ever seen on a cruise ship. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. And Silent Disco became my new favorite thing. Yeah. Um, I don't normally dance on cruise ships, but if it's a Silent Disco, it's just perfect yeah. somehow. Which, to explain the Silent Disco, is you'll see pictures here shortly. Mm -hmm. You put a headset on. There's three channels of music. Uh, normally, it's an older channel, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s. 
Then they have the uh, 90s, 2000s, and then um, also like a Latin channel as well. Mm -hmm. And you just, your headset, like there's different colors, three colors, blue, green, and red. Mm -hmm. And that kind of tells you what music that person's listening to, basically. And no one else can hear it. You click it on and you're just dancing. Um, some of the songs you hear people singing along to and having fun as well. It's supposed to be silent, but still people are singing along, having a good time. Yeah. And it's, it probably lasts like an hour and they yeah. have it in different areas of the ship every time. So see, it looks a little different each time, maybe yeah. just to get a different crowd every time. Yeah. But I went to every single silent disco. They had it three times and I went every time. And it, that was a blast. Yeah, it was yeah. a really good time. Lo absolutely loved it. Um, and sometimes I'm, you know, not the best dancer, but I didn't care. It was fun. We had such a great time at that. There wasn't, like, some of the typical things that you find on cruise ships. Like, there actually wasn't a piano bar. No. Um, there wasn't karaoke. No. Um, there wasn't those types of things. So it was kind of it was kind of weird, but some of their games were, like, fun. to nice. I usually don't participate in ship games by the pool, but I did a couple. Um, I did some line dancing. I did some <laughs> question of the days. Um, things just actually ended up being really way more fun than I would yeah. th than I thought it would. I mean, we only put one twenty dollar bill in the casino, and mm -hmm. I mean, the casino's nice, but there was other stuff to do to keep us busy the whole time, and that was really nice. I mean, yeah. I agree. Yeah, and another thing that gave this a five was also another unique experience that you can't get on any other ship, and that was glass blowing. Glass blowing, amazing! It was cool. We got to experience glass blowing. I made I, a wine glass. I made a bourbon glass, a whiskey mm -hmm. tumbler bourbon glass. It, and that's where else are you gonna do that like i mean they're there to help guide you and really do some of the important steps but you still have a really good hand in making your piece of art mm -hmm. I mean, it was awesome i yeah. totally cool totally it's worth the money great unique experience yeah, yeah, yeah. i would definitely recommend definitely it. recommend it of course yeah for mm -hmm. sure so I hope you enjoyed this. So that's oh, uh, never mind. Oh, so <laughs> that's four point seven five on that uh, scale for entertainment. With her five and my four point five equals out to a four point seven five for entertainment. Uh, yeah. Actually, our highest category. Uh, yeah, highest one. Um, and yeah, phenomenal entertainment. Celebrity gets it right on the entertainment. Except, Except for the small areas where they struck the out with the comedian, the comedian and the, magician. and the magician they bring in on the ship. It's not, yeah. Those aren't like house magicians. I so know, but I mean they should go watch the videos yeah. of these people. We agree and, to disagree. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> the the entertainment was well worth seeing every night. I mean, I'd say. All right, let's roll the clips. made it to our last category, Ports of Call. If you made it this far, thank you. <laughs> um, we have some big controversy here. I gave our Ports of Call a 4.5. I gave it a 2.5. <laughs> um, so first of all, this was a Mexican Riviera cruise. We stopped in uh, is it Puerto Vallarta, uh, Cabo, San Lucas, and then Ensenada. I had never been to any of these ports before, but I have been to some on the, like, Cozumel and, like, some of those. On the golf side. Yeah, on yeah. the golf side. Um, the water 
was a lot prettier on that side. I was more maybe impressed with those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I gave it a 4.5. I'm going to have some of the same, maybe, reactions as him. But, I mean, I still had a good time visiting, like, new places. The only stop I really didn't like was Ensenada. And so that knocked it down about 0.5. <laughs> really, it knocked it down way more. Um, from I enjoyed the resort. We went to um, a resort in Puerto Vallarta. And I, I don't know. I just, it was okay. It was okay. Uh, so, for me, look. <laughs> one, I guess I'm a Caribbean guy. I like the Caribbean. The water's prettier. I like the islands better. Uh, this is my second time doing the Mexican Riviera. And the first time around, I remember saying, I don't know if I want to ever do it again. Uh, but this time, I'm like, I'll, I'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot again. Steph's never been there. So I was like, let's let's do it again. Uh, once again, everything kind of came true of why I don't like the Mexican Riviera. And, oh, what'd you think of? I just thought about how I didn't really like any of the shopping there. Yeah, there you go. No good shopping. Um, but yeah, the water is not pretty, in my opinion. It, uh, the water in Puerto Vallarta is very rough, for one. So I didn't get in the ocean that day because it was not, uh, it was beating everybody up pretty much. The resort we went to was nice. It was all inclusive. We had the use of the pool, the beach, food, drinks, all that good stuff. So Puerto, Puerto Vallarta was okay. Um, but they brought you off, you know, they drop you off and make you walk through this whole shopping area. Then you have a long walk back to the port or you jump on a little tram thing that takes you back to the ship. So we jump on the tram thing. Uh, next Cabo San Lucas. I mean, seeing the sea lions jump on the back of the boats as you're going into the very congested Harbor. It, it was nice. Um, but it's, I hate, I hate, and I know hate's a strong word. I hate when you go into a, a, a small area and people are just nonstop trying to get you to buy their stuff, pose with their lizards, take you on tours, jump in their taxis, jump in their boats, whatever. Like, we're just walking around just trying to enjoy the area. I don't need constant people trying to get my attention and trying to pull us different directions. Um, so that, to me, is like, just I just don't enjoy it. It doesn't feel like more on edge and I'm more alert of my surroundings compared to if I was in the Caribbean somewhere. Um and then Ensenada, holy smokes. Why does any cruise ship go to Ensenada? What a dumpy port. I'm not going to mince words here. This is a dumpy port that nobody should stop at. It's horrible. It's a very industrial area, very poor. We went downtown. We paid the $4 round trip per person, jumped on the bus, went downtown, did some of their flea market shopping area down we there. We weren't going to go downtown. No. But there's really nowhere to go if you don't. No. You just have nothing. to, like, walk downtown. I yeah. mean, we were just going to go, like, see what it was all about. And then we're, like, we started walking. We're, like, I don't, I don't think this is leading anywhere. So, yeah. like, really, you kind of have to get on the bus and go downtown or have an excursion. Yeah. But the excursions there are not that good either. They have some wine country excursions where you can go out to the, the vineyards and stuff and do some wine stuff. I guess they have a blowhole there you can go visit, but there's no beach. There's no, I mean, the excursions were horrible. And it was us and a Disney ship in port that day, but I, was just, I have no idea what you're supposed to do in Ensenada. It was a horrible <laughs> last stop. But um, they have some really good drink sales. Like, I mean, we already had free drinks on the ship, yeah. but if you didn't, yeah, if you, didn't, you could yeah. probably get some really oh, cheap yeah, yeah, drinks Oh, yeah, for sure, there. for sure. Yeah. But, um... Just, I mean, I guess that's a true Mexican experience, maybe? I don't know. You are in a but, Mexican city, like, yeah. straight in the downtown. Area. Yeah, very poor. A um, yeah. lot of, lot of t tiny little kids begging you for money. Um, but, yeah, just, I don't know what the appeal is there other than Ensenada's probably giving cruise ships a ton of money to stop there, which, if that's the case, then why am I paying more money on the cruise ship for port fees or whatever? To me, I don't know. I... It's a whole not. I'm not going I down that road. I still feel like a 2.5 is a little extreme, but I feel like I forgot about the shopping, so maybe mine might have been too high. So I think we even each other out. Yeah, probably. But it's probably somewhere in between a 2.5 and 4.5. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, and um, if you're comparing yeah. it to the other side of Mexico, like Cozumel, Costa Maya, yeah. all the, those are such nicer ports. Now, than... some of those ports can be, like, the same. Like, you see a lot of the same yeah, yeah. stuff. So at least this... Was still the same, but same, but different than that. It didn't have the same standard like port stores that you see. It was all basically like flea markets. Flea market, yeah. You didn't have the diamonds. And I remember in Cabo, it was like have... a huge. I couldn't yeah. even like. You'd have to like 
rustle through stuff or like know what you really were looking for because it's all so crowded and piled and yeah it's kind of hard to shop yeah. unless you wanted flea market style shopping and haggling which can be fun but yeah i don't like to hang well, just give it to me for your cheapest price whatever that is don't make me stand there and go back and forth with you to try to get there's no like just standard gift store it's no. all just like a flea yeah. market style yeah so all the i mean part of it i know my score part of it's because yeah i'm just not a mexican riviera guy uh mm. but i just didn't care for the ports um i know there's some other nice reports down there i've done aquapoco before and that's all right Mazel Talon's nice. Um, Zeyawantanejo is nice as well. So give me any of those over Ensenada. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still don't understand why anybody stops okay. in Ensenada. We get Did, it. We get it. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Did I'm you sorry. give the overall score? Oh, the overall <laughs> score then for the ports is 3.5. So 3.5. There we go. Let's wrap this up. We're long-winded. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> for the tender back to the ship in Cabo. All right, hey, so that's going to wrap up another getaway with the Crawfords as we review the three premium cruise lines out there. Here are our final thoughts, though, on the Celebrity Solstice and this cruise. One thing I forgot to mention is that the Wi-Fi on this ship was horrible. Uh, we It came with your package, free Wi-Fi. It's not good at all. Um, you could do some basic stuff on Facebook, Instagram, what have you. But as far as, like, if you play any games or uh, streaming. Snapchat, streaming, none of that will work for you at all. Um, so that's a I shame. I think you might have to pay extra for it. May, I don't know, because on, on Princess, we had no issue with it. So, and we just had their And we had wifi. their free Wi-Fi. So, yeah. I mean, what a, it's a huge step down as far as the Wi-Fi goes. Um, anything else you want to care to add on that? or? Um, I think my final thought is I can't wait to try like a different um, class or a newer celebrity ship because I think the results would really be a lot different yeah. had this been a newer ship. Um, so I'm excited. I'd definitely try Celebrity again. Yeah. No, I'd, def I'd, I'd give all of them a try again. And that's also something else I'm going to touch on real quick is that uh, if you follow any of these fan groups on Facebook, <laughs> social media, what have you, people are very, very in love with their cruise line is one thing I've learned. Um, and there's nothing really huge that sets these lines apart. They all do something well or something not so well. But they're all pretty good. Just give, give them all a shot, really. I mean... Aside from Carnival, I think that's kind of the bottom tier, but everything else from there kind of goes up. I think NCL You're going to have a good time on any ship. Yeah, it's just I mean, your kind of what you're looking for, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, everyone has their love and has the ones they don't love, and just kind of go out there with an open mind and try to figure out what you like or don't like. I mean, that's kind of my recommendation, I guess. So with saying all that, we're going to wrap this video up. Uh, the final score for this ship and cruise was a 19 so that ties it with Howl in America, and that does give the Discovery Princess the winner at 22.5. The gold crown, yeah, <laughs> however you want to say it. Um, but yeah, I would definitely try another celebrity ship. I'd give Howl another go. We were just looking at a Howl cruise last night, actually, for spring break. So, uh, yeah. If yeah. you want any of our reviews for the last two ships for Howl in America at Disney Princess, Check out the links included in the description. Exactly. Like, subscribe. Uh, we're kind of in a slow season right now for traveling because of my work and Steph's work as well. But there will be a lot more videos coming. I promise you that. We appreciate your love, support, all that good stuff. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. We'll try to respond as well. All right. Take care.